Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 263. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Twilight Genesis. G'day. Hello there. Twilight, how are you doing? I'm not too bad yourself. I'm feeling mellow, like really low energy. That's all. Like, I want to relax. I want to go to bed. I blame Flurry Heart. <laughs> sucking your life away. Uh, I blame the two slices of very cheesy pizza. That'll get me to bed soon. But anywho, also joining us is Starstream. Hello! How is everyone doing? Fine, how are you doing? Good. Just had a good vacation. Yeah, great vacation. Yeah, yeah, I remember that the whole Singapore trip thing to listen to the Kingdom Heart concert orchestra thingy. Then what else did you do? Buy a lot of stuff, yeah. It so happened that I found out that oh, there's such a thing known as a free comic book day on the first week of May. I was like, uh, yeah, it net me a lot of MLP comics. So that's awesome. Yeah, free comic book day exists. It's just certain locations don't really hype it up because, well, um, they don't really get nothing out of it, especially countries like Malaysia. I'm sure Australia and Singapore has them, but I'm not sure about the other ones like Thailand or Indonesia. From what I heard, it's a worldwide event, but I'm not too sure about Thailand side. But Brunei is a confirmer no, because we don't have a comic book shop here. Yeah, probably it's the best you'll get is a bookstore, so they don't cover the comic books thing. So yeah, they, they bypass the system, those jerks. Well, anywho, uh, let's get into news, because there's a whole... Well, not a ton of news, but there's a lot of news. And we first go off to, well, talking about comic books... Um, the new uh, paper uh, trade paperback for the MLP movie prequel has been um, shown, and it looks really good. I, really I like the like cover. The cover. <laughs> Jinx! You guys each you, you guys each of you try to sew down something. I don't. Oh, we said the same thing. We both like the cover. So. Yeah, I know. So you guys owe each other soda. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, art is done by Tony Fleece, which is always good. Not much more to say except that the uh, you can pre-order it now on Amazon for nine ninety nine. Uh, it will have a tentative release of September fifth, two thousand seventeen. Um, other than that, uh, I'm not sure um, what else to what what else to say other than this looks good and I can't wait to read the comics. Well, I have a one thing to point out. Mm-hmm. Why is the date that they release is always after Sea Pony Con? Uh, no comment on that one. I mean, even if we do, I'm not sure we can get it at all. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just kind of annoying because if we can get the book early, the any of the movie books, we can actually get it signed by Andrea Lippmann. That would be awesome. Oh, you wanting to get that sig. Ah, well, well, it's one of those things where we'll just have to wait and see how it goes because um it's going to be a paperback and as always i'll buy this online so it doesn't really affect me that much but talking about books you guys know that in new york city there's going to be another convention well as of now i know about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he ain't brony con by the way uh, this is called book con yay twilight will be so happy well, this is a convention dedicated for book forts. Yep. <laughs> Yay, book forts. So um, what's going to be happening at this book con thing is, well, um, expect Comic Con, but for books. So you'll get book authors, book um, paraphernalias, and all that good stuff. But the only reason why we're covering this is because Hasbro seems to have their sight on promoting the My Little Pony movie books over there. So, yay, uh, they're also having a panel, and the odds of them revealing a few things about said movie are interesting. Said con are going to have special guest appearance by Andrea Lipman and Ashley Ball. So, if you're interested in going to said book con, uh, go ahead. Uh, let's see where's this location at. Um, uh, I got no idea. Maybe a, a good Google search would probably do me good, but you know what? I I don't really remember. But uh, their panel, Ponies on the Page, the My Little Pony, the movie prequel story. So they're going to have a panel, 
Saturday on June 4, 2017. Time is 1.30 to 2.30. Location, room E116. Uh, nothing much is known about said panel, but it's all going to be good because um, whoever's going to attend, they're going to report back to us and we're going to get some info. So yay. Can't wait. And also talking about the movies and the prequels, one of the few books that is coming out is the My Little Pony movie prequel book called The Stormy Road to Cantalot. So this is a story of how... Um, what's the character's name? Tom Rider? Storm? Uh, Tempest Storm. Uh, Tempest Shadow, yes. This is the backstory of how she went to Cantalot and stuff. Uh, the synopsis is there in the show notes to read. So, this is going to be fun. Um, ages range from 8 to 12, grade level 3 to 7, so this is a really easy book to read. Pages are at 192 pages long. So it's basically a well nice paper book to carry around if you're interested in reading it. I'm not sure if I will because I'm lazy. But this will be a good addition to read when you're if you want more info on the Pony movie. I'm still slightly annoyed that they're doing prequel cool stuff in the form of books and not sh- uh, animated short. Mm, true. I I I understand what you mean. And at the same time, too, I, I, I think this is their way of trying to cross-promote the brand to other things, uh, the books, comics, and whatnot. And they even said that um, starting from issue 51 to 53, they tried to... Oh, is it 54? Uh, they tried to um, insert something for season 7. And I've read all of them, and... From what I can gather here is that the villain for season 7 might be in the book, but that's what I gathered. But that's not a huge confirmation. That's just my speculation. It'd be interesting. Maybe I should get my hands on it and have a look through. Yeah, you should. It was a really fun read. Other than that, um, this movie book is interesting. It's worth the read. It's worth the read. And last but not least, Twy, you're Australian, right? Yeah. Well, I got good news for you, my friend. It seems that the Pony movie is hitting two theaters on November 2nd. It's good that we have a date. A little, uh, well, a lot annoyed that it's about a month after the US, but down here in Australia, we're quite used to that. Oh yeah, you, you, you want to know what's going to grind your gears? What's that? New Zealand is getting it a day before the US. <laughs> New Zealand is getting it a day before the US? Okay, so... If I wasn't going to see Ponycon, all the funds for it will go towards going to see this movie in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I need to ask, um, what's the currency between you guys, like Australia and New Zealand? Is it one to four one, or is it a bit different? I am actually not entirely sure. Hmm. I've never bothered to look up the New Zealand currency. Hmm. Oh, okay. I, I, but I you assume mean. it's probably one to one, the New Zealand dollar. Okay, that'll be something interesting to find out. But nah, um, well, <laughs> you guys are kind of lucky because at least you guys have a release date, while my country here doesn't have a tentative release date. We got nothing. We we don't have anything. Like I'm double checking. Um, even Japan has it. Mmm. Mmm. So annoying. Well, I guess that just means you should make another trip to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a good plan. Oh, uh, wow. But uh, I, I'm looking at the release dates here, and it seems that Brunei doesn't have the movie too. So, no. yeah, we're screwed. Sadly, no. Mm. But the funny thing is, I noticed that Indonesia is getting it early also. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not too sure how is it confirmed or not the, with the date. I mean, I still remember GSC's uh, posted the... What do you call it? The trailer. Oh, you're talking about it, and that people one? People asking about it, yes. Oh, okay, that, that, that one, cinema, that one is just Malaysia. a troll. That one was just a troll post. Just because um, one of the admins at GSC were kind of thinking that, huh, My Little Pony also has a movie? What's the world coming to? And said person is ignorant. But in all honesty, at least, well, if you can't wait, we could just go, go to Indonesia. Well, you can go to Indonesia. I want to go to Singapore. 
Ah, uh, yes, that's true. That's true. <laughs> or maybe Australia. Who knows, right? Don't forget by the fact that as soon as any time anything that released in the US, be prepared for a lot of spoilers. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. But honestly speaking, um, when the Equestria Girls movie came out, um, the internet was not full of spoilers, but they were pretty nice about not spoiling things too much. Yeah, I, I think I know why. Because not many people like Equestria Girls. Uh, well, not saying not like it. I mean, I know people like them, but probably it's not as popular or something. I heard that some people were turned off because of seeing them as a human kind of thing. Oh yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. That was a big thing. Even down here, a lot of people just didn't like the idea of the ponies being humans. Oh, well, true. Now that we have a proper pony movie, that's so what's the chances that we're going to see a lot of pictures popping up here and there? <laughs> the pictures are already popping out here and there. No, I mean by the fact that if... You know, cam rip and all these oh, kind of things yeah. where they take the photo from the cinema. Like, yeah. Oh my god, I like this scene. I just take the photo and oh, they yeah. just show it at the Derpy Boru or something. Yeah, okay, uh, those are going to be prevalent and there's no avoiding it. But, you know, it's one of those cases where we need to be vigilant and like Kelpin from EQD mentioned, blacklist the spoiler tags for the movie. So, yeah. It'll be interesting to see if the movie actually does cause a resurgence in the fandom though. Ah, yeah. So, Twa, you, you mentioned that. So, how is the fandom going on for you? Because I'm kind of in an isolated bubble here myself. Uh, yeah, we're pretty isolated from the majority of the fandom here. Uh, but I do my best to keep my local areas bronies up to date and get them going to meetups and stuff. Actually, I think we've got another one coming up sometime the next month or so. Ah, that's cool. You're keeping the fandom alive. Yay. Yeah. And yeah, that's uh, great. We've got a Discord server for all of all of Australia for the bronies, which yeah. is pretty uh, got a ton like so many lurkers who don't ever post, but we got a decent handful of active chatters and whatnot. <laughs> awesome. Fandom's far from being dead here, but it is still a bit of a shadow of its form. Probably some people just didn't like how their hit cannon got busted and they just quit. Eh? Oh yeah, you get people like that. We we have uh, one person. I I doubt he watches this, so he won't get too mad. <laughs> but we we refer to the act of disliking a character to the point where you quit watching a show as pulling a kanga. <laughs> pulling a what? We had this a kanga. Kanga. We we named it after the guy's screen name. Oh. He he dislikes Starlight so much that he quit watching uh ponies and he keeps abandoning the Discord server every time a season comes up now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why what's wrong with Starlight? Did I, I find her okay? Because Starlight was a bully and they they really, really don't like bullies and they, they don't accept Starlight's uh Reformation? Of, yeah, they, they don't like Starlight not getting, like, serious major punishment. Her major punishment was time traveling and failing every time and opening up to Twilight. Was that not punishment enough? Okay, maybe in Kanga's eye, but honestly speaking, I, 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 I don't know. That's a bit overboard. Well, there's a lot of people who still really, really hate uh, Starlight, though, so. And well, just most most people haven't abandoned the show over it. Yeah, but Starlight like honest. kites. Who can really be evil if you like kites? Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's the point of the story. And um, Star, you were saying? To be honest, I I don't find that surprising that not not many people like don't like Starlight Glimmer. I like Starlight now. I know, but. You remember the history of the pony fandom? I mean, by the way, way back then during the. After the finale of season three, mm -hmm. you could already know what happened. Oh yeah, I mean there was like a, there was a huge riff. I remember during where people like prefer unicorn twi or the alicorn twi. Everyone was like, "Oh no, I don't like this Twilight. It sounds like she's very OP or something." <laughs> like, oh yeah, uh, I think a lot of people left the fandom over that. Thank you, Larson. Yeah. Uh, but but I think beyond that point, we already know who is the true fans and who are not. 
that's considered as a filtration in a way. <laughs> yes, filter, filtering. Yay! The more, the more dedicated or the more hardcore. Still looking at the date, one thing I don't understand was how did Cambodia is involved in it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm just sad. Ah, uh, but you know what? That's for that's another story for another day. Um, and so that's it, news. But you know what? I, I need to point something out to the audience at home. Um, if you guys listen to me all the way through, you probably heard um, this guy's name, Twilight and Starstream here. And well, them two are Patreon supporters for the show. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> like to point out, we didn't get on the show because we're Patreon supporters. We've been on the show before then. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, I, I just like to point it out just because, hey, this is awesome. But no, um, the other, the other thing is, let's try something new. Um, well, not really something new. It's been going on for a while and what's been entertaining us. But since you guys are here, I want you guys to strike up a topic. Like, let's just do an impromptu the Patreon thing. I, I don't know. So, what do you guys want to talk about? Oh, I was not prepared for this, Norman. You've <laughs> thrown me a curveball. You sneaky, Ooh. sneaky man. <laughs> I know. I have been known to do so. Oh, That's I can't really think of what to talk about. I haven't could... really been doing too much lately. It could I mean, be I was organizing, trying to get to see PonyCon earlier, so that's mostly on my mind at the moment. <laughs> oh, well, uh, if you want to talk about the see PonyCon thing, uh, we should probably do something in the terms of convention or something like that. Yeah, we, last week we did the convention thingy, but you know what? Let's go from the point of us noobs. Like, I know uh, Star here wants to talk about conventions. Uh, that was my Patreon questions. True, uh, that was your Patreon question thing. Well, I did, didn't explain it properly to you at that time, but I, I mean, well, but to be honest, that well, you did the episode, it was a good one. It really helps a lot, to be honest, because especially if for those of us who decided to travel all the way to to see the big one, the BronyCon. Mm, or any other convention, actually. But yeah, to, a, to any convention, yep. Yeah, but still, but still. So, Toy, how's your planning going? Like, how is it going? Uh, slowly. Slowly, yeah. I've, I've got... Mostly my plans are a brony from the other side of Australia and I are probably going to split a hotel room and, and flights between the two of us. But aside from that, we, we don't have much of a plan because I'm broke because I can't start a Patreon up until I get past my own personal goal of making content and having so many followers. And anyone who's followed my YouTube knows exactly how well I've done with that with my last video coming out in mid-February. Wow, but still, everybody has their own pace. No, nobody's rushing like Sanic. Yeah, it's all about taking the time. Yeah, but still, but still. Probably throwing that curveball at you guys is a bit too rushed. So you know what, I, I'm going to go for the fact that we all here like to play video games and I, I know that we all like ponies, so... What about that pony tabletop game thingy? Excited to play? Oh, yes, yes. I want to get it, but at the same time, as much as I want to buy it right now, I have to save for CPonyCon. Mm. It's really annoying because I just saw your post yesterday, I think. You have it now, don't you? Yes, I, yes, I do. Um, unfortunately for me, I haven't read it yet because reading is not one of my strong points, except if it's fan fiction and it's on a tablet. <laughs> But uh, I will try and read it up on it. Um, my initial plan here, well, spoilers, um, is to understand the game and play it at um, CPonyCon with a bunch of you guys. And if I'm lucky enough, I'll probably do a panel on it. So that's the initial plan. If not, I could always struck up a game with the reviewer crew and see how it goes from there. You will get to see Silver Quill um, play act as Silver Quill in an RPG. So, yay. That will definitely be interesting. Yep. And who knows? Maybe I'll, I, I can uh, invite other personalities like maybe Manga Kamen or Sketchy the Changeling. Maybe we can add him to as a character roster. Who knows? So, that's the initial plan. But I don't know. I, I like playing RPGs, so um, we'll have to see how it goes. And Star, how about you? Like, like you haven't been saying much. You don't want to play? 
Uh, yeah, sure. I would, I, would, I would like to play it, to be honest. If I'm not mistaken, mm, we got a... Wait. Yeah. Yeah, we got we have our own crew also. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Chicken, uh, our mutual friend, has the book too. So, uh, if he knows how to play it, we can have a whole bunch of people playing it, and we have much fun, and we we'll probably create a Discord group that people want to join in and play with us, or probably not. Well, we could use the same channel that we've been using, huh? which right now is a bit silent. Yeah, true, because everybody's busy, but still, but still. At least the easy thing about having a, uh, what you call it, the good thing is that we got tabletop simulators, mm. so it's easy for us to play. Yeah. Or there's other websites like the Roll, I, I could be wrong, the Roll D20? Something yeah, like that? probably that. Probably. Roll 20. Yeah. Roll 20, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of websites that you can do this kind of things. Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, I think if, if one of us understands the book, uh, they can be the GM and um, with twice experience in tabletop D&D he'll give us tips on where to go to play set games you know pen and paper we don't we're doing it digitally so what's the best place by the way what's the best place twice to play uh, online um, D&D well it depends how much money you want to throw at it Roll20 is a good place especially if you don't have any money or don't want to spend money but for playing specifically D and D and now Pathfinder, if you have the money that you can sink into it, Fantasy Grounds is a program you can get off Steam, and it's really, really good. I use it with one of my D and D groups. What is Fantasy Ground, by the way? It's just sort of like a, a just a, a program designed with like dice rolling mechanics, and you can make character sheets through it. Oh, oh, yeah. It's really good because you buy the various books and stuff in a digital format for the game. And then when you load into the game, that's all there. And you can drag and drop items from like a a library menu into character sheets and whatnot. It flows and works really nicely. It's just extremely expensive. How much ex- expensive are we talking about here? Uh, you have to... Subscription. Get a standard license, which is like thirty bucks, and then it's like another anywhere from thirty to fifty bucks to get like a rulebook ad- ad- addition to the game, and then all other source books like adventures and splat books all cost more money. On top of that, oh, because everything you every kind of book you get, you have to pay for separately. The best way to do it is have one person, probably your DM. Buy the ultimate license, ultimate edition license. Buy all the, the books and stuff he needs. Then everyone else we, uh, just gets the free demo. Because then, if they connect to the person who has the ultimate license, their game gets gets treated like it's the full version. Ooh! So basically, uh, have one guy be the GM, and everybody piggybacks cash to the guy, and well, everybody gets the game then. Yeah, that's what uh, my group does. The, the only problem is that if you don't share some of the basic files from the GM's version of the game to the players uh, outside of the game, like if you just send them over Facebook or whatever, the game will up try to upload the files from the GM's uh, side of the thing and download it to all the connecting players, uh-huh. and that can take a long time. Oh, so that's... yeah. Okay, there's a pros and cons, okay. Yeah, there's definite pros and cons. Uh, the biggest con definitely being the price behind it. My DM who runs a game I play every uh, most Fridays, he has the Ultimate Edition. He did all this way. It cost him, with discounts, about $240 Australian. <laughs> I, think, I, think he, I think he saved like a hundred and something dollars. Okay, but uh, does he play a lot of games? Oh, yeah, we, we play... I'm not sure if he uses it for other groups, but the group uh, he uses it that I play in, uh, we play almost every Friday, if we can. Mm. Well, if you guys keep playing or you guys play every week, then it's worth it. But if not, then ouch, that that hurts. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he started using it with other, one of his other groups as well. Hmm, but still, uh, that's good. So... Yeah, uh, those are some good websites to play DD and Ds and also to play the pony games online. 
because of the dice rolling and whatnot. So, yay. Definitely. But anywho, um, we reached the point where we hit the topic of what have we been doing or what has been entertaining us this week. And since I am the host, I shall go first. And entertaining me this week has been... One, one of the few things that entertained me this week is the Let's Play video from the Two Best Friends Play channel playing Undertale. So, yeah, I've been watching a bit more of Undertale, so yay, that's fun, always. Um, other than that, nothing particular. Haven't been playing games that much, well, besides the Overwatch and Payday. Um, that's about it. <laughs> wow, I'm boring. Twi, please tell me you got something. Uh... Yeah, I've got a few things. I've been jumping between playing the original Destiny, mm -hmm. Dark Souls 3, Heroes of the Storm, <laughs> yeah, yeah. tiny amount of Warframe, and <clears throat> squeezing in wherever I can, uh, writing part three to my story, The Sunset System, which I really should have finished last weekend, but not quite as easy as I was expecting it to be. Well, writing is a hard process. But you, you mentioned Heroes of the Storm. Any reason why? Oh, there's the uh, uh, the 2.0 Nexus Challenge. Yeah. Which is almost the entire reason I've been playing it since 2.0 came out, a.k.a. Heroes of the Storm Overwatch Edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my, next, that, yeah. my next video for YouTube is probably going to be a rant about it. <laughs> Actually. Oh wow! Can't wait because uh, well, like I mentioned before, I'm uh, playing video games a lot, and Heroes of the Storm was one of them. But I didn't really count it that much. But now that you mentioned it, yeah, it seems that everybody's playing Heroes just because of Overwatch. Oh yeah. Oh, but for if anyone wants like an idea of what my rant's going to be like, they should look up uh, co-optional podcast, one of the more recent episodes. Uh, Jesse Cox talks about it. And he has a, a nice rant, which is roughly on the lines of where I'm going to be going. <laughs> I believe it was either episode 168 or 167. No, 167, yes, because Cry was on it. All right, then. Uh, but still. <laughs> and what about you, Star? How, how has your week been entertaining you besides Hero of the Storm? <laughs> like I mentioned before, I had my travel last week and just... It, I mean, it was, a, it was kind of a chill thing until the, until after I came back. I, I forgot to get some things here and there. I was like, uh, never mind. I could go back there again one day. And then after that, a while later, I found out that, oh, you know what? Legend of Zelda, Symphony of the Goddesses Orchestra is happening on the 26th August. I was like, oh god, nice one, man. I'm gonna be heavily juggling how I'm gonna do this. <laughs> oh yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that too. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh great. That was like a week after Sea Pony Con. Oh yeah. So how am I gonna do this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but still, I hope you do balance it out. And yeah, you mentioned to me that you went to Singapore to listen to the Kingdom Hearts Orchestra thing. How was that? It was pretty much in the whole thing was very good. It was it was incredible. I mean, the the first song when they play, it was like they hype up the whole thing, really they hype it up. And after it, until the ending, which was they played the final boss medley. Oh man, it was really good. Where where all the you can hear all the boss songs for all the games they put in as a medley. Ooh. It was incredible. Then then um. The composer was there also, the Yoko Shimaura, if I'm not mistaken, that's her pronunciation. She was there also, and a bit of a troll, a bit. Hi, what did she do? <laughs> she was troll. Oh, she was like, she uh, she came in at, during the last part and to say, oh, um, after the yeah, there was an encore also that do the credits after they finish, and everyone was like having standing ovation. She kept saying thank you. After that, it was like cooling down a bit, and after that. She just like hyped it up again. It was like everyone like like clapping their hands and all this thing. After a while, she went out. Then she came back in again. <laughs> <laughs> and then she and then everyone was like everyone was like shouting. After that, it was okay. And it went back went back in again. Then she came out again. <laughs> I was like, wow. I think she did that like two three times. It was like really funny. <laughs> uh, make everyone want more. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. The nice thing was that there was a. 
at least she was there in person. So that was awesome. I mean, I've seen some photos of uh, someone from my side that uh, some from Brunei actually went there as a VIP. Mm. So they get her signature. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I even heard someone uh, sign for the Xenoblade Chronicles. Oh, uh, did she work on that too? The album also. Huh? Did she work? Yeah, it was like, yeah, she worked for Xenoblade Chronicles also. Oh, wow, that's so cool. She, I look at her profile and she worked on majority majority of the big titles. Oh, wow, that's a cool. A lot that's of cool. big titles. Not just Kingdom Hearts, yeah. Not just Kingdom Hearts. She even worked for a bit for the Konami side also, oh, for really? the rhythm games. Only one song only, yeah. Oh, okay, babe. Like, that's cool. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, and also talking about video games, and I did receive an email saying that they Bungie having a review of a Destiny Two, apparently. What review? I don't know. They say that they release a trailer or something for the Destiny Two. What gameplay or something? I can't remember. I thought Destiny Two is already out. No, not yet. Why? Destiny Two doesn't remember? come out till September. Uh, sometime this month was meant to be a gameplay trailer or a, a gameplay reveal. I'm not sure what day it was, if it was meant to be this weekend or next weekend though. Hmm. Yeah, because I, I did receive an email from Destiny. Ah, uh, all right. Bungie, yeah, from Bungie. Yep. Yeah. Well, um, if it does come out or something like that, I guess we'll be highly entertained. So that'll be something to look forward to. But at the very least, I did have a very good haul for my trip. <laughs> I mean, other than having my audio upgraded, yeah. Yeah, the comic books. Audio upgrades too, so yeah. <laughs> uh, much fun, much money spent. Uh, how are we going to do stuff? <clears throat> but anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitters. Show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Um, Twy, where can the good people find you? Uh, they can find me on Twitter as at midnight underscore pint. They can also find me on YouTube and Facebook as Double Pint Productions, and on Film Fiction and DeviantArt as Twilight Genesis. Ah, awesome. And Star? Um, you, people could find me on my DeviantArt at Angelic XX. Ah, alright. Then, any more? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's just that I post pictures of my plush. Ah, no. Not much of a difference. Yep. Alrighty then. Also, please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Uh, you can also catch us on com. Also, we're doing this review and discussion podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there, you'll get to hear me, Silver Quill, and Sapphire Heart Song talk about the pony movies, comics, episodes, and general discussion. And sometimes we have a special guest of the week. So, stay tuned. And also, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at www.patreon.com slash the MBS show. A dollar will get you a thank you and full access to everything we have five dollars we get your thank you for access and also a topic of discussion or a review that you want us to do and well one thing i've been doing on the patreon also is releasing um review or discussion podcast early exclusively for the patreon people i hope you guys like that because there's something new i've been trying i have been noticing though is uh, I haven't really been listening to them because <laughs> I've been swamped with YouTube backlog that I'm trying to get since I had six days straight without any internet through the middle of April. Oh, wow. So I went from being about two weeks behind on my YouTubing to an entire month. Oh, How? What happened? Was it that? Beca- was it because of the whole, what you might call this, uh, internet issue thingy with the ISP? Uh, yeah, uh, we got connected to the fiber network, and that just that just dropped out our net connection for six days. Uh, and calling people to check it out is going to cost more money than it needs. So stuff, right? No, we told them they didn't have any idea what was going on either. Wow, that's not fun. Yeah, it wasn't. It really wasn't. Yeah, but at least you get your um, connection now, so that's good. 
Oh, yeah, now it's a lot faster than it was, but it's still so far behind other countries. Well, at least you're not America where you get uh, throttled down or you got limited access. They still have generally faster internet speeds than Australia, though. True. <laughs> no comment on that one. We're, we're, we're behind actual third world countries in terms of uh, internet speeds. How bad is it? What speed like, do they give you? Like, I, I think... We're, we're supposed to get like 25 M- MB download speed. Yeah, 25 MBS downloads and like 2 MBS upload. It's like our fiber network as opposed to other countries where it's in like hundreds. Mm, you, that's mm. still, well, other countries do have the hundreds, but um, they're quite expensive. Over here in Malaysia, the minimum is 5, but as you go up, it costs more money, so it's 5, 10, 20, 50, 100. It's around that kind of scale. What about you, Twi? Sorry, what about you, Star? How's things over there? My case, uh, pretty much behind also. Uh, right now, pretty much because they have a quota system, so mm. it makes it even worse. Oh. I'm paying, I'm paying, uh, 20 Mbps, uh, megabit per second. 20. 20, yeah, 20 megabit per second. I think the same for you, Toy. For a 99, 99 a month. Sing, Brunei slash Sing dollar. It's the same. Sing, Singapore dollar. Yeah, I heard Singapore got really good internet too. Yeah, that, that, and which gives me a 300 gig a month. I was like, um, a few times I, I finish up the quota myself. <laughs> yeah, but 300 gig, gig is not. <laughs> It sounds a lot, but honestly, nah, like, games go around really high. Yeah, so it's like, when you, when you wanna do something, when you have a bundle of quota, the, what, what is the best thing to do? Download a heavy hitting stuff at the end of the month. True, true, true. <laughs> They're like, the last, you aim it for the last two days and you confirm that you can download, finish it, then you just shoot it until it, <laughs> Throttle, and the next day it reset. <laughs> so done. Uh, all right, all right. <laughs> good plan, good plan. Uh, so continuing back on to what I was mentioning with the Patreons, um, uh, five dollars will get you topic of discussion. Uh, maybe you want us to talk about internet speeds. I don't know. So anyway, I'd like to thank uh, Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Nam Dracotorius, Starstream, and also myself, Lag. Thank you so much, guys, for the support. Um, if you would like to support us, like seriously, uh, we need more supporters just because. Um, it will be at www.patreon.com slash the MBS show. And anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Twilight Genesis. And this is Star Street. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun and amazing MBS show. See ya! Bye! Bye bye!